Hello everybody and welcome to another YouTube video. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about how much software engineering interns make. Now, I'm not just going to be looking at websites and taking all of the information that you guys can look up yourself. I'm actually going to walk you through some of the job offers that I've been given for a software engineering intern position and talk about the difference in compensation between US tech companies and Canadian tech companies. Now, not to spoil anything, but as you guys know, if you work in the US, you get paid a lot more than if you work in pretty much any other country for software engineering. And I was pretty surprised at how much less I actually was offered for an internship position in Canada than I was in the US, even for the exact same company. So in this video, I'm actually going to share with you some real figures. I'm going to tell you exactly what I was paid when I worked at Microsoft, what I was offered from Shopify and what I was offered for my second internship for Microsoft, which I actually declined. And then I'll talk to you about things like signing bonus, relocation, and then just some other kind of salary figures that I know for people that work in the space and that have worked as software engineering interns at other large companies like say Tesla, Google, Facebook, Amazon, so on and so forth. But with that said, if you guys want to potentially get an internship at one of these companies, then you need to check out the sponsor of this video. Before we get started, I need to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Algo Expert. Algo Expert is the best platform to use when preparing for your software engineering coding interviews and has the highest quality coding interview practice questions. With over 140 practice questions, detailed solutions in nine of the most popular programming languages, a feature packed browser based coding environment, extensive test suites and conceptual overviews and code walkthroughs for each and every problem. Algo Expert is the best resource to use to ace your coding interviews. Algo Expert also has a data structures crash course, coding interview assessments and a mock interviews feature. I can highly recommend Algo Expert as a former customer myself and now an official instructor on the platform. Get started using Algo Expert today by clicking the link in the description and using the code tech with Tim for a discount on the platform. So I'm just going to start by stating that I totally know that these numbers are extremely inflated and very high that I'm about to show to you. The reason for that is I'm kind of taking this information from very large, big tech companies. Of course, if you're working for smaller tech companies, maybe not as say name brand tech companies, startups, stuff like that, your compensation is going to be drastically less than what I'm putting here. That doesn't mean that's a bad job. Doesn't mean you shouldn't take it. And of course, these jobs that I'm talking about are very difficult to get. And there's hundreds of thousands of students and just other people that want to work in these internship positions. So it is somewhat justified that you get paid that much. Uh, but anyways, I just want to say I'm totally aware this is not the average salary for a software engineering intern. This is more referencing big tech companies, uh, kind of the Facebooks, Amazons, Microsofts of the world. So anyways, let me just share with you some base salaries for different tech positions, at least ones that I was offered and that I worked in. So let's start with the internship that I actually did. This was at Microsoft. I started in May of 2020, finished in, I guess, August of 2020, and I worked there for 12 weeks. So I had three months working at Microsoft and the base salary that they offered me in US dollars was 7,850 US dollars per month. So for me in Canada, that is a ton of money. I mean, even in US dollars, that's a ton of money anyways, but that was about 10,900 Canadian dollars at the time due to the exchange rate being something like 1.27 um, from US dollar to Canadian dollar. Now, the reason why I was paid in US dollars was because my job position was actually in Redmond, Washington at Microsoft home base. So that's like where the offer was for. And I had actually flown to Redmond, Washington, done the on-site interviews in kind of early January of 2020. And then obviously the pandemic happened and then we moved to work from home. However, since I had signed a US job offer, they had to pay me the same compensation that I had signed. And so I was paid out in Canadian dollars from the Microsoft Canada office, but what the US compensation was that they offered me. So hopefully that makes sense. But that's kind of the reason why I was getting a US rate, even though I was working and living in Canada, it was because before the pandemic happened, I had signed the job offer to work in the US and then they couldn't allow me to actually go to the US because of the pandemic. And so they kept the same compensation, everything, but just switched the currency to Canadian dollars and did the appropriate conversion. Now, some other base salaries uh, that I've been offered. So first of all, I got a return offer from Microsoft that I actually declined. I'm not going to be working at Microsoft this year for an internship again. The reason why they gave me another internship is because I was too young to have a full time position. Right now, I'm technically in my third year of university, just finishing that. Um, and so they had to give me another internship. 
Anyways, the salary for that internship was the exact same, 7,850 US dollars per month. And then they actually offered me a 5,000 US dollar signing bonus for returning as an intern one more time. Now, when they sent me that offer, so the second kind of return offer, the assumption was I would actually be working in Seattle, Washington, or I'd be working in Redmond, Washington. I always mix up Seattle and Redmond. They're kind of right beside each other uh, in Washington state. Anyways, uh, that's what they offered me. So they offered me 7,850 plus $5,000 signing bonus. And then what happened is they realized that I wasn't actually going to be able to go to Redmond again because of the pandemic. And so what they did is they retracted that offer from me and then they gave me another offer based on the location I was going to be working in, which was kind of the Toronto area in Canada. Now, this second offer that they gave to me was drastically different than the first. I actually have it in front of me right now. I'm looking at it to make sure I don't get this wrong. And the compensation then that they offered me for the kind of Canadian position was only $5,300 Canadian per month. So I'm not saying only as if that's not a lot of money, but relative to what they had offered me before, that's about half. So previously it was like 10,900 Canadian. Now it's 5,300 Canadian dollars. And the reason why that compensation is so much lower is because cost of living and whatever other reasons they want to state. But essentially because I was working in Canada, they pretty much sliced my uh, compensation in half. And then they even reduced the signing bonus to 3,500 Canadian dollars. So that kind of gives you the idea of the difference between working in Canada versus working in the US, even just at an intern level. And of course, there's a lot more stuff that happens when you're gonna be a full-time employee, but that is kind of the base salary and then I guess signing bonuses that I was offered. Now, the last internship position that I was offered was at Shopify in Canada. So this was actually in the Ottawa office for Shopify, and I was offered $33 an hour as a back-end developer intern. Now, I'd be working 40 hours a week. So let me just pop up the calculator on my phone here and do the math. So 40 times, what I say, 33, so that's $1,320 per week times four weeks. So that's about $5,280 a month. So that's about on track with what uh, the Microsoft Canada offer letter was. So that's kind of my experience with salaries and signing bonuses from tech companies at an intern level position. But I'll tell you about a few of my friends, I won't obviously name them, uh, that told me the salaries they were making. So one of my friends worked at Tesla. And first of all, he said that working at Tesla was great. It was a really good time, but all interns were pretty much expected to be working 60 plus hours a week. So take that into consideration when I tell you this number. He said that during his first year working at Tesla, he was getting paid 13,000 Canadian dollars per month to work there as an intern. He was working on the back end and doing something with like autonomous vehicles. I mean, you know, that sounds very generic because that's what Tesla does, but he was actually working on like the AI side of that and some server component or, or something along those lines. I then had a few people that worked at Google that I knew, and they were making about $11,500 Canadian per month. Uh, and that's pretty much all that I can remember. Um, there's a few other people that I knew that worked on at Amazon and all of that, but I don't think they ever shared their salaries with me. So anyways, that is kind of the range for working for large, big tech companies. Now, of course, that is in the US, like you have to work in the US to make that kind of money. But obviously, even coming to Canada, $5,300 a month for no experience and learning a ton and having this on your resume is obviously not a bad gig whatsoever. All right, so now I'm gonna move on to the other aspects of compensation because that's not the only thing that they give you when you work at these large tech companies. A lot of the times there's relocation, lump sum payments, um, there is like vacation pay, tax gross up, all kinds of other things that actually are definitely worth considering um, kind of as a part of your total compensation for these companies. So for Microsoft specifically, what they offered me in terms of kind of extra compensation was relocation payment or relocation lump sum. So it was kind of two options when it was assumed I was actually gonna be flying out to Redmond and working in, uh, in Redmond, Washington. Option one was Microsoft will arrange and pay for all of your housing. So you'll live in whatever their corporate housing is. You don't really have a choice on where you're gonna be or if you have roommates or any of that kind of stuff, but they'll arrange it for you. They'll pay for it for you. So that was the first option. The second option, option was Microsoft will pay you a lump sum 7,000 US dollars and you arrange your own housing um, when you're actually working for Microsoft. Now, there was another aspect of that. There was also, I'm calling that relocation, uh, but there was another like travel kind of incentive or travel bonus, whatever you want to call it, uh, where they would pay for your plane ticket there and back 
or they would cover all of your expenses related to driving to your internship and driving back, including a one night hotel stay or something like that. And then they also will reimburse you for all expenses related to travel. So like if you ate ma meals at the airport or stuff like that, uh, then they would pay you back for that. Finally, they also had a rental car option. This is what I was actually going to do when I was going to be working at Microsoft and I thought I was going to be flying out there. Uh, they have partnerships with a bunch of, bunch of rental car companies. And so I think they had a rate of like $300 per month that they offered to interns to rent out some, some vehicle. Now that's a lot cheaper than if you were to rent it just straight from the rental car company. So something to consider. Finally, as a part of the kind of remote, um, offer letter, whatever you want to call it. They also included equipment. So they provided you, I'm looking right here. Um, actually, it doesn't say exactly how much money, but they provided you with the laptop, monitor, keyboard, mouse, docking station, headset, and something else. And actually at the end of my first internship I did at Microsoft, since it was remote, all of that stuff that they offered to me, I got to keep except for the laptop. So I got to keep the docking station, the monitor, keyboard, mouse, headset, and then I had to send back the actual laptop. Uh, and the laptop they sent you is like pretty souped up, like, you know, a good, <laughs> nice computer so I can understand why they wanted it back. Um, other than that, there's a ton of other just kind of like random miscellaneous things that they'll give you. For example, there's like a free gym membership. There's a tax gross up. A tax gross up means that since all of these kind of relocations, things are considered taxable income. So like if you get paid, you know, $5,000 from Microsoft to relocate to Redmond, Washington, for example, you have to pay tax on that amount. Microsoft will actually pay a portion of that tax for you to the government so that it offsets your kind of tax burden. They call that a tax gross up. Other than that, I'm looking through the uh, kind of offer right now. There's a 4% vacation pay. Um, obviously, you get all of your stat holidays. And I think that's pretty much it related to compensation at these companies. Now, I will say uh, the Shopify offer had a few things related to this as well. Obviously, there wasn't any relocation bonuses because I was actually close enough that I could have walked to work when I uh, was living in Ottawa and would have been working at the Shopify Ottawa office. But they did provide you with $1,200 towards like a fitness and, and gym kind of budget type of thing. So if you wanted to buy a bike or you wanted to get a gym membership or anything like that, then you could use the $1,200 they provided you to do that. They also provided, um, what is it, money for remote work. So one of my friends who worked at Shopify was given, I think, $1,200 or $1,500 to like build her own home office, buy a monitor, whatever she wants. And then they provided a laptop as well. So anyways, I think that's all I really need to talk about related to compensation as an intern at these tech companies is relatively sim similar to a full-time position, except you're not getting stock. At least I don't know any interns that have gotten stock at these different companies, but yeah, these salaries are just crazy high. It kind of blew my mind when I was actually offered that salary the first time and then even comparing it to Canadian salaries, right? It just goes to show you that if you want to make the real money, working in the US is really the place to be, or at least working remotely with a US job offer. So anyways, I hope this gave you guys some insight. I apologize if it was kind of all over the place, just trying to give you all of the information that I have. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in another YouTube video.